Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be testing the ISO performance and exposure recovery of the highly anticipated Sony A7S III, which is one of, if not the, best low light video cameras in the world right now. So I'm expecting good things. So I'm going to go through the entire ISO range of this camera, and there are tons of ISO values. And then I'm going to move on to the exposure recovery test, where I'm basically going to underexpose this image up to five stops, overexpose it up to five stops, and then show you the image that I'm able to recover in post. So keep in mind that while shooting S-Log, it should be a little bit overexposed, and that's how you're actually going to get the best image out of S-Log video. But this test was done in what the camera considers to be the correct exposure. So occasionally, I'm going to be referencing a clip from the same ISO that is actually pushed up one stop in camera and then brought back down to match in post. Sort of like what you would be doing if you were shooting in S-Log anyways. So all of the camera specs for this test are listed in the description below. And with that being said, let's check out this ISO performance test. So let's take a look at these tests, and there are tons of ISO values here, so I'm not going to talk about every one. 160 and 200 are perfect. Okay, 250. We're barely just starting to see noise in the shadows, but this is very hard to see unless you're very zoomed in. 320. Again, the noise is very, very slight and contained to the shadows, and you would only notice it if you were very zoomed in. 400. 500 looks great still, and this is the last value of the low range. 640. This is the base ISO of this camera, so it should be the cleanest, but honestly, it doesn't really get any cleaner than the previous ISOs. But don't get me wrong, it still looks super clean. Okay, here's our first comparison with the same ISO value, but pushed to stop in camera, then brought back down to match in post. And this may be hard to see, but this did clean up the noise a bit. And that's the theme you will continue to see when I do these comparisons. 800, the noise is the same, still confined to the very dark shadows and barely noticeable. 1000, the noise is filling in a bit more, but I'm still talking about only something you would notice while very zoomed in. 1250. 1600. Now you might start to see noise on the whole scale of the image, maybe if the image is very darkly composed, but still really good looking. 2000, the noise is getting a tiny bit dancier. 2500, it's getting even dancier still. And now you may notice some grain in the deeper, darker colors, but everywhere else, it's very subdued. At 3200, the noise is getting a bit chunkier. Okay, at 4000, the noise is increasing still, and the darker colors are now getting a bit noisier too. 5000. All right, 6400 ISO. This is like my general rule of thumb, maximum ISO for video cameras, but this is still looking pretty good. Now you'll see noise manifest on the image on a whole scale, but still very, very slightly, and it's still mainly confined to the shadows. Okay, again, here's ISO 6400, but pushed to stop in camera and brought back down in post to match. And this alone has pretty much eliminated all of the noise. And this just proves even further that S-Log video needs to be overexposed by at least a stop. 8,000. 10,000. Now the noise is getting a bit faster and a little bit more aggressive, and the very beginning of some artifacting is going on, but again, that's only visible when you're very zoomed in. 12,800. Okay, now the noise is getting considerable, but I would still call this a pretty excellent looking image considering we're in five digit ISO values. 16,000. So we're going to talk about why this ISO value is special in a second, but for now, let's take a look at the pushed version of this value. Okay, so compared to the original, you may have noticed that the noise is completely subdued. It's like you'd never know you're looking at a 16,000 ISO image. 20,000. Okay, 25,600. The noise is starting to get pretty wild and kind of choppy, and now there's noise over basically all of the image except for the highlights. But overall, still a pretty decent looking image. 32,000. At 40,000, we get some pretty wild noise, and color grading is going to become hard after this, simply because all of that color information is kind of getting really confused in there. But this brings up a point. Definitely at this region and other cameras, we would be seeing significant chroma noise starting to introduce, like magenta or green. But that is very subdued, and the noise seems to be strictly luminance noise. With that being said, it is starting to green shift here a little bit, and that's a theme that's going to continue from here on out. 51,200. 
64,000. Okay, 80,000. The noise is getting very chunky, and the image overall is looking softer just because of all that loss. Okay, 102,400 ISO. Now we're in the six digit ISO region, and the next value is the start of the high ISO range. So this image is very choppy, and the image as a whole is really just starting to suffer a lot. 128,000. Okay, so now we're in the high ISO regions, and things aren't looking up. But let's quickly check out the pushed version of this value. So obviously we still have a healthy amount of noise here, but look how much one stop more light helps subdue that noise. It becomes much less chunky and aggressive and is certainly less noticeable. 160,000. Now the noise is getting really out of control, but the chroma noise is still really well maintained. 204,800. 256,000. All right, we're starting to get very, very noisy at this point. The whole image is falling apart. But in an absolute emergency, like for a documentary work, or something where just getting the shot is more important than what it looks like, this will get you by. 320,000. 409,600. Okay, finally, at the very highest ISO value, now we're seeing massive blotches of green chroma noise, and the noise in general is absolutely out of control. And this video signal is basically broken, in my opinion. Okay, so that's it for the ISO performance test. Now I'm gonna dive right into those exposure recovery tests. So I have the camera set to its base ISO here, 640. And here is the correctly exposed image. Now in these tests on the left side of the screen, you'll see the original over or underexposed image, and on the right, you'll see that same image but recovered in post to the best of my abilities. And in the middle will remain the correct exposure. So one and two stops underexposed, we can perfectly recover the image with absolutely no loss. Okay, at three stops, we're getting a bit lossy and the image is starting to shift towards magenta. Noise is creeping into this image and it's even getting into the highlights, and it gets pretty bad from here on out. All right, at four stops, we're getting rather lossy, and this is pretty much like a broken image. The noise is very pronounced and chromatic, and the magenta shifting is really exaggerated too. Okay, five stops, this video is pretty much completely broken. There's huge artifacting, and you can start to see sensor readout lines and over-amplified flickering. Okay, so moving right along to the overexposure test in ISO 640. And again, keep in mind, S-Log video is much more friendly to overexposure than under. And this is actually the proper way to shoot S-Log. One and two stops over are literal perfection with absolutely no loss. And this image is actually a hair cleaner than the correct exposure. Okay, at three stops over, we were still able to recover incredibly. But now my contrast slider is almost maxed out to match the original after adjusting exposure and there's very slight loss in the very upper highlights that you can see on the mug above me. At four stops, I was able to recover this almost entirely with just some loss in the highlights, and you can see that on my nose. Okay, at five stops, finally we're seeing some bad loss in the highlights, like my face, obviously, which has some irrecoverable data. With that being said though, the mids and shadow values seem pretty unaffected, and that's pretty amazing considering the original image. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the exposure recovery test in this camera's verified base ISO of 640. But as some of you may be aware of, there's some controversy as to whether the A7S III has a dual gain output sensor. Sony isn't advertising it as such, but since its release, some tests have surfaced that may suggest that this camera also has a higher base ISO of 16,000 as well. Which if true, would be kind of nuts because that's a really high value to have and still look clean. So even though it's unverified, I still decided to do the same exposure recovery test like the last one, but in 16,000 ISO. So let's check out that test. So here's the correctly exposed image at 16,000 ISO in the middle, and I'll start by underexposing. All right, at one stop, this recovered very well. There's a slight, slight green shift, and I just had to decrease contrast a smidge two stops. That green shift got a little bit more pronounced, and now the noise in general is just more pronounced too, but it still recovered pretty nicely. Okay, at three stops, we're losing shadow info now, and noise is taking over, and I'm still fighting that green shift. Okay, at four stops, we have tons of noise, huge information loss in the shadows, and my scopes are completely blurry in general. 
So I actually do not have a five stop underexposed test. I actually had to physically dim down my lights to underexpose this much, and I may have lost count of which stop I was on. But you can imagine based off of the last test that it probably wouldn't hold up that well. Okay, this is what made me thankful I did this test because this is really impressive. Overexposure in 16,000 ISO. One and two stops recover perfectly, and actually the visible noise seen in the recovered image is way more subdued than in the original image. The only thing going on here is a small green shift which is very easily countered. Three stops over were still perfectly recovered, and remarkably, there is literally no noise on this image. It's completely clean at 16,000 ISO. Okay, at four stops over, we're finally starting to see some loss in the upper highlights, but still, there is basically no noise in this image, and that's incredible. My contrast slider is maxed out though, and is even getting a little help from the shadow and highlight sliders, so there's not much wiggle room in this image anymore. Finally, at five stops over, we have lost information in a good chunk of the highlights, but still, the noise in this image is extremely subdued, and exposure-wise, the rest of the image is basically unaffected still. Okay, so now that's gonna wrap up this video on the ISO performance and exposure recovery of the Sony A7S III. Okay, so I think a few obvious takeaways from this test are this camera is a high ISO beast. Even in some of the really high ISO values of this camera, the image is really clean looking. Also, whether it's verified or not, there's definitely some magic going on at the 16,000 ISO value. Because I was able to get an outstandingly clean image just as long as I overexposed it significantly. So if you have any questions about this camera or any of the tests that I did in this video, or if you have any more information about that 16,000 ISO value, please drop a comment in the comment section because I'm dying to know more about that. So anyways, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned in for more of our weekly content. And we'll see you in the next one.